So this is a very complex survey involving mainly rainwater, but some hygroscopic salts and some condensation from insufficient ventilation and uh, mould. Uh, this is how I explain it at the time of the survey. So basically, the, the key issues are the top floor flats. It appears to be the box gutter to the front that's causing the problem. Uh, causing the water leaking in along the that, ceiling. Uh, along the ceiling, exactly. Right. Next to the chimney press. Um, this one has the, the, the gutter is completely full. Uh, the, uh, gut, um, the hopper is completely full. You can see water on the top of it. it. It's bound to be something as simple as, you know, a leaf or something that could be fixed easily, but somebody with a ladder is going to have to go up and do that. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there isn't an issue with the the way the, the bricks are, are bare and then they're uh, on top and then they, they've got the render. But I'll have a better look through the... Because it's obviously continuous, not just in the corner, but it's all, all the way across. Um, I suspect that the hygroscopic salts and or condensation that's causing those dribble marks, but I'll have a better look at that when I see the data loggers. Okay. Uh, in the corner, the so the tenant was concerned about the sound of uh, heavy water whenever it rained coming down, and that's just because there's, there's a um, drain that goes down past the window that he's he's thinking it's there's something wrong, but it's his, and it's just the it's way it's drain, water drain, drain is. draining. Um, I've had a look around the size, but I, I haven't had a look at the results of it. But uh, I've, I've taken lots of pictures of uh, the film of the roof, but I haven't had a look at all of them. Yeah. Um, so they also, um, they've got uh, mould, and that's primarily because the bathroom extractor fans are not set up correctly. So one step going slowly, but it has a decent uh, overrun. So this is the run between when it's switched the light switched off and, and the fan stops. It's a half an hour, which is what it should be. The other one is working well, but with a short overrun. Mm -hmm. So one, one is going at about a third of the speed. So I think in your, your property is more or less the same yeah. as well. We, we think, uh, I think, well, Alessandro thinks, and I agree with him, that it doesn't look like it's coming out of the, the side of the property. So I'm going to have a look before I leave to have a look at the site to see where it might be coming out. And if it isn't, then ultimately the solution would be to... to because this this is external, isn't it, on the, on the, yours, the other side? Um, above your, the yours is external on that right. side. Ours so, goes into flats. So ultimately so you, can, you can drill a hole in the wall and put it yeah. out. And that's a, it's a simple solution, but it will take you know somebody an hour to drill. Yeah. But it, it you can't... It would fix it. It would fix it, exactly. Um, so, so in your flat, is is mould with a little bit of residual water from the, the balcony and some, uh, some residual uh, some damp coming all the way down from the top, some penetrating damp. So uh, the balcony's still leaking. No, no, no. As it's just it's the um, leftover water. Oh right. Yeah. Um, so in this flat, we've got this is uh, penetrating damp from the the uh, hopper but probably also some residual damp uh, from bef when you had the work done before you had the work done uh, I'm going to recommend a couple of additional things just in case but you know the some of the lead work um, I it doesn't look perfect but it doesn't mean that it isn't it's just I can't see underneath that's the lead work on, on the flat roof uh, on adjacent the, to this side wall on the flashing yes um, then you've got some mold up there the oh, I opened that trickle vent. That that one needs to be opened. I'll open that one. Um, and the vent, the vents are working okay, but the problem is that it's been vacant, and with no dehumidifier or heating or uh, as a whole. I mean, these Victorian properties are really difficult to insulate well, but I, there's there's quite a lot of insulation. What what's called thermal bridging. So. Where you get specific heat loss so in the corners you get a lot of heat loss mm -hmm. uh, above the lintels you get heat loss in the in the loft around the chimneys you get a lot of heat loss mm -hmm. um, so the different areas of natural heat loss but that's not the root cause that's a compounding factor the root cause is always insufficient ventilation in, mm -hmm. the, in that case 
and you know a good dehumidifier is is really worthwhile. I like getting um, out. We've had the heat on for a few hours, as you said. It's, it's nice and warm. So Laura's never had a problem in here with being cold, has she? It's just oh, her bedroom. Yeah. That's it. One. But you said I know, but when she isn't heating it, when she's away during the day, yeah, yeah. or or overnight, or it, when she's away. We've come back and um, that no one's been here. It hasn't been that cold. We've come yeah. in, has it? Yeah. Not going freezing, it's, it's you know, pretty. I'll have a look in the thermal image. I'll do that now, actually. This is looking through the thermal image at the top floor, and you can see that the mould and condensation lines up where, where you've got the heat loss. The primary cause of condensation and mould is insufficient ventilation, insufficient dehumidification, but it's made worse by poor heating, poor airflow, and heat loss from poor insulation. But you can see a few That's of the That's the terrace there. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, so it's still left to put mark. You'll see in the far corners right at the top, it's just seen quite damp up there. Yeah, OK. Um, so okay. those are separate, Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah. I'll have a look at that. Um, that's this room. Um, that seems to be boxed. This room here, it's, uh, you won't probably see it because my girlfriend started a little business, but behind here we get a oh. bit of mould because he's in here oh. anyway, but okay. on the wall. Um, okay, I'll have a good look. Yeah, yeah you might not see too much now because I cleaned it before. These are only up less than a month and I cleaned okay. it beforehand. But they're going to make the situation worse unless you put insulation there. Well, unfortunately, so that's no the insulation in this property. No, no, but no. just put in just whatever you can whatever get. Whatever I can. Uh, I'll get vapour out. And then ventilation. we suffer from a lot of mould in, in the here. cupboards. Uh, okay. the, uh, a lot of my clothes in general, um, it's very cold. Okay, well, uh, we can find out the source of that. And then the same down here. I again to mess in this flap. And then same again in here. As in, I've got these, we tend to use these bags, which help a bit, but I've got a dehumidifier. But they don't really take a huge amount of They out, don't, and I, I put in a dehumidifier every month. Um, and then, yeah, you can see up top there. You've got this dehumidifier yeah, here. Yeah, it's usually on uh, half the day. Um, so when I usually turn it on, I put it on max for around four hours. But it's probably not good enough. In there, it's not good enough, right in the corner. No, no, no. It's, uh, oh, you need yeah, to have a 20 see. litre a, a day. Yeah, yeah, see, like, yeah, I empty nearly every day and it's 11 litres. Uh, yeah, so you're seeing mould spots there. Okay. And then, far corner there. Okay. Behind this mirror usually, but mm. and behind the chest of drawers. This, again, I cleaned not too long ago. Okay. But should be fine. And then bathroom. We don't... Oh, sorry about the cat. <laughs> The bathroom will be the it's, source. Not yeah, the, so uh, obviously we got this reinstalled, a new one, supposedly much that? better, um, um, six months ago. And has it improved things? Uh, it's hard Marginal. to tell, personally, I don't think that oh, these actually go outside. Oh, I'll check personally, that. Personally, because um, I did a test where I left the shower on for a good half an hour uh, with the oh. fan on. I went outside in the evening where it's freezing cold and I couldn't see steam coming out of the house from That's a good minute. good good way to test. Well it was the only way I could think to test. Uh, well it was, oh, and, and then there's uh, another bathroom. Yeah another bathroom here. And then obviously so that's when you need dust by the looks mm -hmm. of it. Uh, living with okay. that. <laughs> and then... So looking on the outside we can see the vent hole has been blocked up so clearly there's no ventilation coming from the bathroom and that would be the primary cause it's of mould and condensation. So here's a thermal image where blue is colder than red and orange.
So the, where the dampness is coming down is here, but that's plasterboard, so it's hiding it. So it'll be moving in all directions, right. but, in, but showing itself there. Right. But, but the actual center of dampness will be there, but hidden. So it's um, hidden there, but it comes out there first of all? Yes, because that's this that is right. dry, dry lined. Yeah. So the plasterboard isn't touching the wall. Right. But that's why it's hollow. So it's nothing to do with the chimney breast? No, no, not no, per se, no, no. But I mean, I, I, I'm going, and this, this uh, mould there, which will be caused by the same issue with dampness right. behind. So you can see a lot more if you have a look here. Right. Do you see the, those dots there? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what's called dot and dab. And it's the adhesive that's holding the plasterboard the plaster on. to the outside wall. Yeah. And you get a risk of condensation, so that that would line up with those dots there, yeah. and that will come. Do you see how yeah. it lines up? I mean, yeah. I can see yeah. that. Yeah. Um, that's why I asked you to put the heating on, so that I can see where the issues are, because because obviously we're now heating it, and and around behind the sofa, um, it's the airflow is blocked by the sofa, right. so it gets cold, or at least it doesn't get warm. Another way of putting it, saying the same thing. Do you see all the heat? It's in interesting to see the machine, the engineered bricks. Yeah. Do you see the shape yeah. of that? The, uh, and then we're getting the cold there because that's that's actually external three sides, so you get a lot of heat loss there. Uh, so if I go into the other room. I'll, I'll go into your room uh, upstairs. <laughs> so, so you can see see all the heat loss there yeah. and and that's the that's because the that's the chimney breast and chimneys lose heat rapidly yeah. Yeah. i also noticed because our external wall on that side is just brick there's no insulation there's no plaster did you have some installation done? No, we, we considered it, but oh, we to do it. It'd be on which, which side? On um, the opposite side, so my um. main bedroom. So in summary, and sorry for using this illustration, but the primary issues in this property result from gutter and hopper issues. The rainwater is flowing off the roof onto the property there are other issues, as is common with Victorian houses in particular, but also modern houses with ventilation. In part, the ventilation is blocked or there is insufficient ventilation. It's made worse by the rainwater. I looked at a few other things around the property and here are some additional items. So, I mean, it, uh, I'm putting are it you too. find me on the roof now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna put it on video, but yes, there is a gap here yeah. and Yes, any rainwater going down there is going to find its way into the property unless it's fully rendered, which is difficult to tell. But you've got a source of moisture going onto this absorbent wall right. and then going in there. So whatever you do there is useful, well, it's but it's not, not the, the solution. Key issue, you know. uh, uh, the sorry, key... I know when I go on the roof, I normally go from this point here. Yeah. Uh, okay, well I was coming here in part because I wanted to see up here, but you can see water is coming down the outside uh, and all the way and it's probably it's probably just blocked probably take a few minutes to solve it with access Just to say that this flat roof of your neighbour's property doesn't appear to be causing you problems at the moment, but there's no drainage or the drainage has been blocked and it doesn't flow out naturally. So this is the chimney breast and this is the lead flashing. Uh, that I would just seal there just just for sake of you no know, and that the water can go down there inside 
ideally it should have been the other way around, but um, I would seal it because obviously the water is running, running down in there. Uh, hopefully it's just sitting on, just going on top of that. But so so easy just to put a seal there um, and flatten it. Uh, I mean, generally it doesn't look too bad. You might seal the gap there. Thermal fin. There's a natural thermal fin. Oh, yeah. 